Hey guys, what's going on? So yesterday I received a message from a client saying that the application that I had developed for them a couple of months ago, it was tested, everything looked fine, we handed off the project, I had not been working and it got me a little worried. <laughs> and the, the way they found out that the application is not working is because one of their users reached out to them via support. And it turns out that the user was not able to access their profile for almost three weeks. And that is definitely not great. The issue itself was pretty minor and could have been resolved promptly uh, had we known that the issue existed in the first place. Uh, so it got me thinking that I'm not going in and keeping an eye on these applications on a daily basis, especially when the project is done and handed off. It seems like the client also is not keeping an eye on the application, which uh, is expected. They have a lot of things going on and it's not an application that you would be using on a daily basis. It's a different kind of an application. So I don't expect them to be keeping an eye either. And either way, it's personal preference if you want to be keeping an eye on such things on a daily basis. For me, what matters is that the application should be up and running at all times. And if there is an issue, I should get alerted so that we can go in and fix it as soon as possible. It is basic observability and monitoring of a given application. Now, in the traditional world, in the development world, uh, we have done it tons of times with different kind of libraries and basically these jobs that run on a daily or a, you know a nightly basis that go in and make sure that a website is up and running. And on top of that, they actually test all the features on the website. So that gets pretty complicated, but it is definitely possible. And I wanted to come up with a similar solution here in the no code world, which is more accessible and uh, more people can implement for the applications that they're shipping. Uh, so I, I got to work, uh, I did some research, I did some thinking, and one of the best ways to tell if the application is working or not is to go and use it. Doing that automatically is a bit cumbersome, so an alternate is to somehow capture the screenshot of the website or the application and send it to yourself to see if it is loading correctly or not. Uh, so that is exactly what I did. Uh, I found this app called, and uh, this is the error, by the way, that uh, the users were getting. We are having some technical difficulties at the moment, and this will come in handy later during our implementation. So the app that I found is called uh, HTML2 uh, HTML to image, I believe, HTML CSS to image. Uh, so I guess the app, what it does is you can give it some HTML and then it converts it into an image. And it turns out they also have an API and they also integrate with Zapier and Make, which is perfect for us. So using the API, what we can do is we can send it some HTML and then it will send us an image back. Uh, so using this, what we can do is we can for the particular application that we want to monitor, uh, we can give it the URL of that application and ask it to go and capture a screenshot and send us a screenshot back. Uh, and we can do this because uh, it, it integrates with Make, we can do this automatically. And then if the screenshot has what we expect it to have, we can assume everything's good. And if the screenshot is missing uh, some of the elements, then of course there's something wrong with the application. So, uh, so I set this up in Make. And then what I also did is in Airtable, I created a, I did, I did this for my client as well. I created a log table where we are capturing the screenshot if everything is looking good. And if there's an issue, we are capturing the error message, which further triggers a notification to the right people based on the situation. Uh, so that's the that's how I was able to solve this issue. So let me show you the make setup that I had to do to make this happen. Uh, and this way I am completely out of the picture. Uh, it's all happening automatically and the right people will get notified if there is an issue. Okay, so let's take a look at Make. So that's the setup. We have HTML, CSS to Image API, and then we have Airtable. This is an option. You can just send a notification and not log it, but I chose to log it just for historical reasons to see the uptime and whatnot. So that's Airtable, that's HTML to Image. And then if you go here in Make, uh, let's take a look. <clears throat> so what's happening is since this API that I mentioned, HTML, CSS to image API has a make module, it actually made things a lot simpler. I didn't even have to use an API. I just used the module. And in here, what I have is, uh, so I have a static URL for the application that I want to test. And thankfully that application supports magic links. So it goes directly into the profile without having to worry about login and whatnot. And the nice thing about this API is that it can actually capture the screenshot of a particular HTML ID on the page, which is perfect because I know that when my app loads correctly, I expect it to have an ID called group wines. And this could be obviously different for your application, but as long as this ID is present, I know that my application is working and loading correctly. It does take a bit to load, 
if I capture the screenshot immediately, I just get the loading screen back. Uh, so thankfully, they also have a way to delay when to capture the screenshot. So they go to the website, they wait for whatever milliseconds I add here, and then they capture the screenshot. This will never be perfect because there will always be a condition when the loading took more than five seconds, but it gets us pretty close. And it has been working for the majority of the time. And anyway, if it's not loading in five seconds, there could be an issue, so I would rather know. So, so that's the setup. So we give it the URL, you give it how long to wait, and then you give it the ID of the element on the page that you expect to be present when your uh, website is loading correctly or your app is loading correctly. So that's the first part of the setup. So what this returns is it will actually return an image back from the, from the app that you had asked it to capture. So you get the image back, which is great because then uh, what we can do is we can use this router and in here, uh, so I have two conditions. So first one is the 200 OK condition. So this is basically checking if the status code from the HTTP module. Oh, by the way, the reason I have to use the HTTP module is because it returns the it returns a URL. And it's actually not guaranteed that this will be an image. It's just a URL. So you have to actually use the HTTP get a file method and provide it the URL so that it can go and capture what's present at the URL. Because the way it works is, if it could not capture the image, then this URL will not have an image in it. So the image is right here, the data. But if the website could not be loaded and the image capture failed, then this will, instead of the image here, contain an error message. And this will come in handy when we go to the router. So currently it captured it correctly. I see the status code 200 and the data has my image. So I can assume that everything uh, worked well. So we can then go here, we can capture the status code from the HTTP get a file method, and then assume that everything is looking good. And then I send a Slack message saying, hey, it's all good. And then I also log it to Airtable. So let me run this quick uh, one time to show you uh, what all we get. So we'll run once. So it's gonna, it is going to browse uh, the application. The, it sends the URL back, and then HTTP is trying to download the file. And it seems like it went in the error mode actually. So uh, let's take a look what happened there. And if we click here, you will see now we got a 400 and there is a there is an error message. So if we continue down this path, the next thing I have is parse JSON. And the reason I had to use a parse JSON is because over here, the data is a string. It's a JSON string. So I cannot use it directly because it's just a string. I need to convert it into a JSON. So the JSON module, what it does is it will basically parse the JSON. So you provided the string, which is the uh, which is the data element here. You provided the string and it is going to convert it into a JSON, which we can then use in our Slack message over here saying there seems to be an issue with the taste profile. And here is the message because that is coming from the parsed JSON. Uh, it, it was the message was present here as text in the in the JSON here, uh, there we go, message. But because we did the parse JSON, we can uh, access it as a variable here. Uh, so this will go into Slack. So if I go to Slack now, uh, I should have received a message. Uh, there we go. So there seems to be an issue with the taste profile, unable to locate, blah, blah, blah. Uh, please uh, go to the website and check uh, that everything's working correctly. So that, it sent us in the error state this way. And then if I go to Airtable, I will also have received an error message here. So it says at 931, there was an error condition and here's the message. I can open it up and I can see, okay, what, what was the issue at that time? Very good. Okay, so now that's the error state. Uh, let's see if we try again and hopefully, because actually the URL should be correct and it should be capturing the right, right image. So let's try again. Uh, I don't know what happened there. Let's run it once. Okay, there we go. So this time it went into the uh, 200 OK state. And if I check the Slack, it says, okay, taste profile is looking good. Here's the image. And it actually captured the image that I was expecting. So now if I go to my Airtable, there we go. Here's the other entry, all good. And we can actually see the screenshot that it captured. So we know that the website is loading correctly. Uh, my guess is that the first time it went into the error state is because uh, the app hadn't been accessed in a while. And I think if that happens the first time, it can take a while to load. So maybe what I'm going to do is before I even run this, I'm going to add, uh, I'm just going to make a call to the website to warm it up. And then I'm going to wait 10 seconds. And then I'm going to uh, call this API to capture the image. So that way we don't face the cold start problem. Uh, so that can definitely be added here. But finally, 
uh, the last step was I set it up to run. Uh, we can go here and run it every... Uh, so I, I want to run it days of the week. So I just want to run it on Monday at 1300 hours, so 1 p.m. So every Monday, I just want it to run on its own. I'll go to the website, check, get the screenshot, and send me a message if there's something wrong and log it to Airtable. So this way, uh, my client's getting notified, I'm getting notified, and we don't have to manually go and keep an eye on the system uh, to make sure. So this is Website Monitoring 101, uh, fully automated. Uh, so yeah, so that's pretty much it. Just wanted to share that with you, how I solve this problem. If you have other ideas to solve this problem, I would love to know that as well. But this one, as I said, the key here is to make sure that you identify an ID on the page that you expect to be present when your app is working correctly. Uh, so give it a shot and uh, let me know what you think. Uh, so I'll stop here for this one and I'll see you next time. 